Hallelujah and praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. May we be upstanding as we begin our service today. Welcome you all to Cornerstone Faith Assembly Church, a city where grace and love abide. Here at Daguriti Kenya, Daguriti Kona, Nairobi, Kenya. Um, today, being the 20th of June, 2021, I want to welcome you all who are watching us online, either through our Facebook or on YouTube. And I want you to do one more thing. You can go to your phone, you can like our page, you can share, follow us, and you can also subscribe. We we'll also want to hear comments from you, and if you have any prayer items, we'll be glad to attend to them. And here is the opening scripture for today. Cornerstone family, worship the Lord with gladness, come before him with joyful songs. For a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. Cornerstone, we are those to worship him in truth and spirit in Jesus' name. Let's repeat that once more. Cornerstone, we are those to worship him in truth and spirit in Jesus' name. Let's pray. Our Father and our Lord, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are so blessed, our Father, that we can call you our Father. We are so blessed this morning that we can come before your presence, O oh God. Always come with thanksgiving, our Father, as we proclaim this, no God, like you, Jehovah. We thank you for your mercies, O oh Lord, that are renewed each and every morning, our Father. We thank you for your loving kindness that endures forever. Our Father, where would we be if it were not for your love? That way we were yet sinners. You sent your son Jesus Christ to come and die for us. So that our Father, we may be reconciled unto you. This is the confidence we have, our Father, when we come before your presence. And this day, our Lord, that you've made, we purpose to rejoice in it, O our Father, as we glorify you, King of kings and Lord of lords. We have no other God besides you, Jehovah. So have your way here at Cornerstone Faith Assembly, Father. In whatever that you are going to do, our Father, may you be glorified in everything. We thank you, Father, for this first service. We also pray for the second and third services, King of Glory. And we also pray for our Sunday school as they run concurrently with our praise and worship services. We thank you and bless you, our Father, because, Lord, you are wonderful. We've tested you, our Father, and we know that you are good. We thank you and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God, Cornerstone. Amen. Can you just look around and if you see a father standing next to you, just tell them Happy Father's Day just as we are starting. Look for a father standing next to you. Happy Father's Day to all of you. Amen. Amen. Are you ready to worship God today? Yes. Are you ready to praise God? Yes. Amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Put your hands together for Jesus. Put those hands together for Jesus. Just a 
us. We adore to Jesus. We worship you this morning. Oh, our hearts are so much desiring of more of you, God. Our hearts are so open to hear more of you, Jehovah. That you may touch us. That you may refresh us. That, Lord, we may draw closer to each and every day. We live that because you are God. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. And we love you this morning. We have come to love on you this morning, oh God. We have come to love on you, Jehovah, this morning. We have come to confess before you and throw on at your feet that there is no God like you. That you are exalted above everything. That you are lifted above every limitation. That you are magnified above all the things that you deem high and above. We thank you, Jesus. You are worthy, Lord. Thank you this morning, God. All our lives, you are a faithful God. We want to say that you are a faithful God. We thank you, Jesus. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Receive our worship. Receive a song of praise. Thank you, Jesus. I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will see On the goodness of God I love you, Lord For your mercy never fails Yeah. <laughs> 
the goodness Running up to 
of the Sunday school and their teachers, may I request all the others to have our seats as we pray for our Sunday school. Let's pray. Our Father and our Lord, so precious, so wonderful, so faithful to us, oh God, that you've given us another day to come to worship you, to glorify you, and to honor you. And our Father, we've not come alone into the sanctuary. We've come with our children, oh God. The blessings that you've given unto us, oh God. It is our desire and our prayer, our Father, that they shall grow to worship you, oh God, and to walk in your ways, O King of glory. And this morning, our Father, as we release them to go to their classes, we pray, our Father, that whatever they are going to be taught shall be with them for the rest of their lives, oh Father. And it is our prayer today, King of glory, that you're going to put your new anointing upon the teachers and the assistant teachers, our Father, as they release what you've given unto them to our children, King of Glory. And it is our prayer, our Father, that their paths shall never be thwarted by the evil one, O King of Glory, and that when they grow up, our Father, shall, they shall never walk away from your ways, O King of Glory. Let them be a good example to the society, our Father. Let them be known, King of Glory, that they are chosen of you, O oh our Father. We thank you and bless you as we release them in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen. We release you, our children. You are free to go to your classes. <laughs> The road 
God, we just receive the fullness of your blessing today. And God, we are excited to hear anything that you are willing to speak into our hearts. Our faith is tuned into the channel of heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's give a great hand clap to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords this morning. Church, it's a great day to be alive, it's a great day to be in the house of the Lord, and wherever you are, if you are worshiping this God of ours, you are in the house of the Lord. Thank you to Maggie and Victor and all the worship team for leading us. It's always good to remember that worship is not the pre-game, it's not the warm-up. This is the main thing. In the house. So we are in the middle of it right now. If you don't know this face, my name is Pastor Randy. I am on staff at this church. Most of you in first service are not used to seeing me because I'm not an early morning guy. I usually later in the day. I uh, want to give thanks to our Bishop Kamau, my bishop, my pastor for this privilege to stand together in front of you. Uh, today is Father's Day. Yes, thank you very much. And on behalf of all the fathers in this place, we want to celebrate you. That's what we are going to do right now, is celebrate our fathers, to celebrate you. Amen, that's good. Give a hand clap, either for yourself, for your father, and we want to celebrate our heavenly father. Now, you all are very lucky. Let's say you are very blessed today to have me as your preacher. Uh, the reason is uh, the title of my message today, Kitwa Udumbe, is The Best Dad Ever. That's the title, The Best Dad Ever. You all are fortunate to have me, the best dad ever. Uh, now, some of you might say, wait, Pastor Randy, that's a bit arrogant. How can you say something like that? Well, I can prove it. I actually have a certificate. And I don't know if, if on the TV, if you can see this, but... This certificate actually says the best dad ever. It's mine. This is my certificate. It's not yours. And this was not purchased on River Road. Neither did I print it out uh, last night from my computer for this sermon. No, this is mine in Asema, best dad ever. So, so it's verified. I am certified. And, and this cert certificate is on my wall in my office. I have one or two awards in this life of mine, one or two certificates. But this one I treasure more than even a seminary diploma or a college university diploma. I treasure this more than almost any award I've ever won. Now this award was given by a very distinguished institution, namely my son. And, uh, and uh, my son, Joel, some of you know him or have, have ever heard of him, he gave me this award when he was about 16 or 17 years old. So today you are hearing a message from the best dad ever. I'm a BDE, C-O-P-H-D, Mimini BDE. Uh, there are over somewhere around 8 billion people in the world today. But only two of them call me dad. And, and that is the greatest honor of my life as a father. They gave me that title. You can't dispute it. And I hope many of you are disputing it in your own mind today. 
Now, with this Father's Day, sometimes it's difficult to talk about such things. Why? Because obviously many of us uh, never knew our father. And some of us, we had really rotten dads. Let's just be honest. We had bad dads. Some of us are not dads. Uh, we are mamas. And many of you who are single mothers, you carry the role, the mantle as both mother and father in your home or your own mothers had to walk in both of those shoes. So as we talk about fathers, we are sensitive of those things. But a couple of facts none of us can deny. One is that all of here had father. Even if you did not know him, biology tells us you are here. There was a father somewhere. So even if he was not so good, even if you never knew him, now, in this moment, you can say, God, thank you for that father. Because you are not an accident. And God, he was God's instrument for you to be here today. Amen? Can you receive that? The second idea is that all fathers, all of them, are sinful. Even the best dad ever is sinful. None of us are perfect. Bishop is not a perfect dad. Neither is the guy sitting, neither was your dad, neither are you. So let's, let's take that pressure off. All of us fall short. And the third, maybe the most important idea in this introduction is that we have a heavenly father. If you are you have a dad. And he is genuinely the best dad ever. If you've never known a father, or you've experienced the pain and horror of you from an earthly father, take rest, take joy that you have a heavenly father, the best dad ever. And can I invite you right now, right here in this service, or if you're watching us, just turn your attention to him and say, Father, thank you for being my father. Can you just pray that prayer right now? Just say that. God, thank you in your greatness for being my daddy. Amen. So now I want us to look at fathers. I want us to look at ourselves. And you can stand with me as we read the word of God. From Ephesians chapter 6. We are going to read from Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4. I've got the New Living Transna Translation. My apology to the DJ if you didn't get that one. But uh, one verse only. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. Some versions say do not exasperate your children. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. His blessing be upon his word as you sit down. Amen. So this is our text today. Fathers, don't exasperate. Don't provoke your children to anger. So this idea of exasperating, I'm not sure, I've been an English speaker all of my life, I'm not sure I have ever used the word exasperate. Exasperate, provoking to anger does not mean don't let your kids get angry. That's impossible. Uh, every child gets angry. Every person that you love from time to time, even your wife, your husband, you make them angry from time to time. That is not the idea. Never make your children angry. But it is possible to create in a child nitabia, a kind of a, a disposition of frustration. It's possible for us to create a model inside of our sons and daughters that are frustrated and angry as a, as a permanent state. And that's exactly what 
Paul what God is speaking to us. Don't allow that. Don't let your behavior, your fathering, cause your children to have that, that uh, roho guvu, that hard heart, that frustration. So what creates this anger and how do we avoid it? I have one, two, three things, three points, three helps to be the best dad ever. Three ways to help our children avoid this frustration, this anger. And the first one, this is straight from the scripture, training and instruction. Number one, training and instruction. Number two, bring them up. Bring them up. And number three, the Lord. Very simple. The nurture and instruction of the Lord. So the first one, the first idea to be a BDE, to get that degree, is instruction and training. Training and instruction. Now, these two words, training and instruction. What is Emma? Kingeleza, training, instruction. Now, they are not the same word. They are not, I don't know how Kiswahili speaks, but it is not the same word. Training is a word that it means and implies discipline. It means giving of rules, giving of boundaries. Training means teaching, right from wrong. It means discipline. It means truth, giving of the truth, sometimes the hard truth. If we are to be good fathers, we need to train our sons and daughters. The other word, the second word, instruction. Instruction means counseling. It means dialogue. It means to reason together. It means to love in a fellowship. So we are doing two things here. We are instructing, but we are also counseling. And we as fathers need a balance between the two. A balance between truth and love. A balance between discipline and counseling. Now, mother, message, this message is applicable to you as well. If we are too much on the side of training, the too much on the side of discipline and rules, we are in danger of forgetting that our children are human beings made in the, in the image and likeness of God. And we end up treating them like dogs. We're in danger of treating our precious humans, our precious children, like mbuzis, beating them. No, do, don't, do, whacking them, beating them, chasing them, rules, 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 rules. And the danger of erring too much on the side of discipline is that we lack on the side of love and respect. But the other side is if we err, if we, if we spend too much attention on the side of, of dialogue, on persuading our children, on, on sitting and discussing things with them, then we're in danger of forgetting these children are not yet adults. Am I making sense? This child does not have to be reasoned with and lectured and discussed back and forth all the time. Or we, we, they might mistake thinking that I have to understand before I obey. That's not the truth. My children have to obey me even if they don't understand because I am the father. We obey God even though it doesn't always make sense because he is the father. But you see there is a balance there. And in this, in this fatherhood of ours, we need, to, we need to, to make sure we are walking in both, in love and in truth. And in giving moral boundaries and giving instructions and, and also in discussing reason with your children. Help them understand the why, the rule. Can we agree on that? I'm teaching you how to be the BDE. The best dad ever. Now the first idea was training and instruction. The second idea is this. To raise them up. Or bring them up. 
Let's say that together. Bring them up. Can we say it together? Bring them up. So that is the second idea for us to help our kids not to live that, that frustration, not to have a life of character, of anger, but actually to have a life of freedom and maturity. We are called to raise them up. Now start with that word up. The goal of parenting is that they reach up, that they reach independence. Our goal as parents are to take them up to the place that they are no longer depending on you. Again, this one means, fathers, we need to have a balance. Number one, we want to build in our children day by day, year by year, a place where eventually they can do it on their own. But what that means is that we have to give up control. We have to trust them to fail once in a while. We have to allow them to learn some things on their own. We have to trust them, give them freedom to make some of their own choices and decisions and coach them and support them along the way. Because ultimately, we want them to achieve independence or to get out of our, in, of our dependence. But the other word, we don't just start with up. You don't, you don't have a newborn baby and say, now go out into the world and, and find a job and, 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 and a husband and, and start doing. No, we are called to raise them. We are called to bring them. And that, that word bring, raising, means that it's a process. So, so fathers, we need to, to see this journey for, as a journey, as, as a process in the lives of our children to be involved in their lives. Don't disassociate ourselves with our kids, but day by day, chapter by chapter of their lives, invest, teach instruct, guide, and maybe most important, lead by example. We raise them by pulling, by walking alongside them, by helping them. Amen? So once again, we have a balance. Raise them up. Let them go. Don't err on the side of, of throwing your kids out too early in life and saying, wait, Get out of my life. You're, you're, you're disturbing me. I have things I want to do. I don't need children around the house anymore. No, let's not chase them too soon. But on the other side, let's not frustrate our kids by, by not being involved in their lives. Be involved. Even as parents of adult children, let's be their coach. Let's be their counselor. Let's be their advisor. Amen? So that is the second idea, is that balance of taking them up and raising them. And then very simply, the third idea is the Lord. Can you say the Lord? This might seem common sense, but it's amazing, even in our church homes, how often the Lord is the last thing. It is the neglected thing. And if we do everything else right as parents, if we provide for, <clears throat> for their medical bills, if we provide for their food, if we get them school fees, and we have not introduced them to the Lord, then somehow we have failed majorly. We have failed at the main thing. If the Lord doesn't build the house, what in the world are we doing, fathers? And the responsibility starts with me. Now I know some of us single mothers, the responsibility starts with us. Instruction, teaching your kids who God is. The Lord, we need to tell our kids who is God to you. Do your kids know your testimony? Fathers, have you ever told your children why you believe in the Lord? Why you trust in Him? Tell them. Tell them often. Tell them in different ways. But tell them. Secondly, pray. 
for your kids and with your kids. Fathers, we need to introduce them to the Lord through prayer. Prayer is not the religious thing we do. Kabla tune tunakula kachumbari. Prayer is the relationship. Let's, let's go to God together in prayer. And Joel, let's hear from the Lord. Let's speak to him together. Fathers, let your children hear you pray. Don't just do it in your closets or on the prayer mountain. And may, most importantly, live your faith. Fathers, to be the best dad ever, we need to introduce our kids to the Lord by the way we live with the Lord. Let there, let there not be a dichotomy, a, a difference between what we say and what we do. And what that means again, nobody here is required to be perfect. Can you say amen, dads? None of us is required to be the perfect father. In fact, show your kids how to fail. Teach your kids how to own up your mistakes. Teach your children how to sema pole. Teach our kids how to repent. Teach our kids how to struggle in this life. Show them by our example. So these are three things that comes straight out of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. How to be the best dad ever, B-D-E. How to get your certificate right there in one word, one verse. Now, how do we do all this? Because that's a lot. That's a lot to do. It's easy for Mubiri Kamamimi to say mahineno, but Mamimi kufanyihi matendo ni gumu. It's not easy to do it. Now, get to this. If you don't get anything else, how do we do this? We do it by the gospel. We parent by the gospel. The answer to how to be the best dad ever is the gospel. Now, what is the gospel? The gospel that a heavenly father loved us so much when we were enemies, when we were messes, that he sent Jesus. Jesus died for me. Amen? For you, right, Winnie? He took your sins upon himself. And when you put your faith in Jesus, he gave you his righteousness. He made you into a new creature. Your sins are cleansed, forgiven forever. You are, a, you are the righteousness of Jesus. You are a son and daughter of God. Can you clap to the Lord for me? That is the gospel. Amen? Really, that's the best thing I have told you so far, is the gospel. And so the answer to being a good daddy, to being a good parent, comes back to the gospel. This idea, go back to the idea of training and instruction. Many parents... Do not discipline their kids. They don't give them rules. They don't teach them right from wrong. Why? Because they don't want, they want their kids to like them. They don't want their kids to be unhappy with them. We spoil our children because we want to be the best friend. Why? Because we want to be accepted. Sikiza. We don't parent to be popular. And in fact, because of the gospel, I know already I am accepted. So I do not have to be popular with my kids. That's the gospel. Am I making sense? Now, some of us over-discipline our kids. I'm talking to some of you. Some of you are too harsh. Too mean, too abusive to your kids. Too many rules, too many, too many beatings like they are boozies. Why? Because you want them to be perfect. Because they need to be number one in the school. I cannot stand for my son to fail. Why? Because they reflect on me. 
because I need them to be perfect so that I look good. You may not confess that, but underlying is that motive. Again, fathers, the gospel tells us because of what Jesus, his grace, because he forgave my sins, because he has already made me righteous, my kids don't have to be perfect. I need to love them. I need to love them. Are you loving your sons? Are you loving your daughters? You see, it comes back to the gospel. The second issue of, of dependency or, or raising up our kids so they can, they can grow up. Some of us, we don't allow our kids to, to go out. We want to hold them close. We want to keep them around dependent on us. Why? Because we need to be needed. <laughs> we want to be needed. We find our value in being needed by those children. No. The gospel frees us from that. My value does not come from being a father to my son, whether he's good or bad. My value, my identity comes from the gospel of Jesus Christ. And some of you, you've had rebellious children. Some of you have had children who have run away from the faith. Some of you have struggled in this idea of parenting. And the devil has used that as a tool to beat you and condemn you. Katika jina la Yesu, let me tell you, there is no condemnation for you. Even if your, your children have gone the way, your identity is not based on whether your child is number one in the school or number 551. Are we together? It comes back to the gospel. Praise the Lord. The gospel reminds us that our identity is Him. But the third idea of the Lord, listen, the Lord is the gospel. The gospel should be front and center, and the gospel is grace. Is your home full of grace? Is our home a place like this church of love and grace abiding? How good is it if, if you and your children leave your home of condemnation and, and rules and, and, and oppression to come into a church of grace and love every Sunday? Wouldn't it be better when you leave this, when you come to this church, you feel right at home? Because this is just the way it is at my house. The gospel is grace. Now, fathers, I know we are all hustlers, aren't we? We are all in this business of, of I've got to get school fees for my kids. I've got to put ugali on the, on the table. I have to pay for my wife's uh, nuele. I have to, I have to put fuel. I have, what? We have to struggle. And, and God bless you. The Lord sees you. And your children should appreciate you for your struggle. We celebrate you. Amen. Good. Hand clap. Amen. Sometimes we don't appreciate our fathers. We don't see what they do for us. But fathers, let me give you this instruction. The gospel first. If we give water, we give school fees, we give, we give clothing, we give security to our children, but we don't give them God. We have missed the main thing. And the responsibility starts with us. I want everyone here, every father, to have the chance, the opportunity to receive that degree today, BDE. In conclusion, I'd like to give you, some of you, the challenge. You have fathers. You have fathers in this world, maybe in this room, maybe somewhere else. Would you think about giving them that certificate? If you don't print it out somewhere or write it on a note, send it on WhatsApp. Somebody tell your father, Dad, you're the best dad ever for me. And if you can't say that to someone because it's a lie, <laughs> if, you can't, if you can't speak those words, you can still thank God for his grace even over that jerk of a father. Amen? And those who of us who are fathers, can we make it one of our primary goals and roles in this life to be above being the best preacher, 
the best businessman, the richest guy in town, make your primary goal in life is at the end to have a certificate, at least in your heart. I was the best dad ever. And mamas, those of you who are doing this double duty, those of you who are walking this parenting job, even you, the best dad ever. Let's stand to our feet today. The word of God is powerful. It touches and changes us. It speaks to every dimension of our lives. Let's take a couple minutes, people of God, right now. Close our eyes in prayer. And let's start with the main thing, and that is our Heavenly Father. The God who loved you, who called you into this world. The one who saved you and holds you, embrace you. The one who protects you. Would you look at him and say, Father, thank you. You are a good, good father. You are a good, good father. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for being perfect in my life. Speak to him as a father right now, people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for being faithful. Thank you for your unconditional love. Thank you for being just and a disciplinarian. But also, thank you for speaking to me, for being patient with me. Thank you for providing for me, but maturing me, growing me up. You are the best, Father God. Hallelujah. And saints of God, in this moment, could you somehow just thank God for the Father in your life? Whoever He is, if you didn't know Him, thanks. Just give thanks for Him somehow. Maybe there is another, another man, another person in your life that, that walked in the role of a father. Thank God for that person. Bless them now. Speak out their name to the Lord right now. This is Father's Day. Speak that prayer, that word of thanks on behalf of that earthly father. finally brothers and sisters let's look inwardly even if you are a young person even if you are a mama in this place the word of God applies to all of us perhaps there is something God has spoken conviction into your life this word today has shown you that some light on, a, on a, some of our manners some of our habits the atmosphere in our home and God is saying change this steer your course a different way relate to your children differently right now would you respond to the Lord by this word and, and if you're just doing a great job say God help me by your grace to just stay in this flow help me not to to fall off help me to be that kind of a best dad for my children it's an important prayer. Let's speak that out to the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that in this place, everywhere we are you are your grace ministering to your children your word of truth touching us at the hearts touching our motives touching our home place our marriages touching our future dreams God your word is transforming us in this moment thank you for your faithfulness God we thank you that as a good father as the perfect father there is no area of our lives that you will leave untouched. So right now I speak your grace. I proclaim your finger of healing upon your children. I speak your voice of encouragement and an and unconditional embrace to your, daughter, to your sons in this place. 
God, you are a mighty daddy, strong to conquer every foe, to protect us from every evil. Wrap your arms around your children today. Father, show them that you are near and chase the enemy far from them today. Father, bless your children. We thank you, God. You are a good, good father. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us give the Lord a hand clap together, saints. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. If you are with us today, you may be seated. Those of you who are listening, just join us with the, the last few minutes of this service. We worship God from beginning to end, every service at Cornerstone. And one of the ways we always worship, worship is through our tithes and our offerings. God gave you everything you have. And he asks us to be stewards. And so what he gives you, let us give back to him. As we close out the service today, we'll have an opportunity to give. Uh, if you're in the building with us, the ushers are there. There are envelopes. You can put your offerings, tithes there. Give as we leave and close out the service. But also on the screen, by now most of you are aware, we have the Mpesa numbers. We have the bank numbers. You can give electronically. Give to the Lord and give cheerfully as part of our worship. And God bless you as you give. We want to welcome all of you in, who are with us in this service today. I can see most of you through your masks, through your epogrombes. Thanks for making the effort. If you're not in Nairobi, you should know it is cold. So we had many good reasons to stay in bed today under those hot covers. But we came and we worshiped the Lord. God bless you for coming. Those of you who are watching us online, we love you. Brother David, but Jamid, Jane, Caroline... Regina, Brenda Okoth, uh, Hemstone, Terrett, Joyce, Sally, wow, we are many, Nancy, Juma, Veronica, Buru, Jenica, Kayleen, Grace, and many more. We love you here. We're so glad that you've tuned in, that you participated with us, and we know that God is blessing you wherever you are. Cornerstone Church is still here. We are alive and well. We are meeting three times a day on, on Sundays. And, and the office is open every day. Our lines are open. The offices are open for prayers, for ministry. We love you. We want you to, to continue to be active in this church. If you're able, come back on Sunday mornings. We have space for you. And we are socially distant in this place. Amen. Amen. Let's stand to our feet together. People of God. Especially all of you BDEs with your new degrees, best dads ever. As you leave this place today, leave as better. Leave encouraged, leave, leave instructed, leave encouraged. And let us go out and be a blessing even to our own fathers today. Let me bless you. Father, thank you. As we close this service today, we open the rest of the service out in this world. Bless your people to be lights everywhere. In, Ken in Kenya, Nairobi, throughout this world, take us, Lord. Let us be good fathers. Bless your fathers. Lord, bless the children, the women of this church. Bless each of us as we walk faithfully with you. We thank you for being with us as we say the grace. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the love of God. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you as you go. Have a great week. Amen. You're a good, good father. Yes, who you are. Yes, who you are. Yes, who you are. I am loved by you. Yes, who I am. Yes, who I am.